Ah, peace be to you. Assalamu alaikum. This is Omar Abdul Malik, health educator and physician assistant. So today um, I am doing my power trail walk. So I got my uh, walking stick here, my 20 pound weighted vest on, and my Nike, cool Nike sweatsuit, which I got from the thrift store for $9. <laughs> but I wanted to talk to you guys briefly about um, uh, a couple of things. Um, one of them is being judged and how that can affect your psyche and your confidence. And the other thing that kind of goes in hand with that is how to respond to haters, toxic people, you know, otherwise known as toxic people or, or you know, internet trolls. <laughs> um, I say it because I, I had, over the past couple of days, I've been speaking to a few of you guys that are, that, um, are applying to, to PA school. And you all have your different life stories about, you know, life challenges that you went through. Some of you all are single mothers. Some of you all are older students, establishing other careers and want to switch over. Other of you all are very young people in high school. <laughs> um, others of you all are, are uh, you know, about to finish college, trying to get into PA school. So you ask me questions about your grades and, and how many W's can you have and how many C's and you had a D one year because this happened or that happened. Um, I, I would tell you guys to, through everything that you have, have confidence in yourself. You know, when you look at your transcript, you're gonna, you know, unless you have a perfect 4.0 GPA all four years of, <laughs> of your college, which I've only seen one person do that ever, ever. <laughs> um, you know, you're gonna have, you're gonna have some uh, some dips here and there. You know, life happens. That's that's life. But you don't want you don't want that to shake your confidence. Some of you all that apply to PA school are not gonna get in. Um, the first time, second time, third time, or ever. <laughs> I wrote a recommendation for a young lady who told me she tried four or five times to get into PA school and didn't get in, and she had decent grades very nice person I was shocked so she's going to a um, CRNA school and not that that's a step down from PA school that's CR, CRNA certified registered nurse anesthetist that is a tough program but I, I wrote a recommendation for her to get in I'd worked with her in ICU in the hospitals but uh, I say that to say that this whole concept of being judged by others is it's it's an ongoing thing in our life you know and it starts it starts when we're babies you know what do you get you know when my wife had um had our children you know it started then <laughs> what's what's the baby's afgar score <laughs> so somebody's labeling you you're like 30 seconds old and you're being you're being uh judged quantitatively and qualitatively and compared to others. Are you a fit baby or not a sickly baby? The doctors want to know. Then the Denver developmental charts and then when they get in school there's all these other tests that they got to take to determine whether their special needs are too dumb or whatever or too smart. Um, and that's life. So those of you guys that when you when you take your SATs and your GREs and then interview <laughs> for your PA program or your MCAT program or whatever it is, your nursing program, and you get in, um, God willing, inshallah, you work hard, then there's a certification exam that you gotta take, then you gotta get a license and spend the rest of your career de defending your license, trying not to have it revoked. <laughs> or suspended or threatened 
I know what that's about. <laughs> Been there, done that. Um, oh my god. Hey, a horse. <laughs> that kind of startled me. Um, you know, and then after you pass, you get your license, you're judged again because now you're going on job interviews. You're like, oh god. <laughs> Why do you want to work with us? What experience do you have? Are you qualified? We take only those with five years experience. So then you have to plead your case. And this goes on throughout the rest of your career. If you uh, want to be a college professor or something. How many publications do you have on your belt? How many abstracts have you presented? <laughs> you know, how many classes have you taught? Does it stop? It does its stuff, and you know it, it gets it gets it can get emotionally exhausting. But you have to be confident, guys. You know, I, I chant to myself some. Come up with a mantra, cheering yourself. Like I like what some of the rappers do. Like, yo, yo, it's all about me. Can't you see something, something? Yeah. You know, just look yourself in the mirror every day, and you, know, you praise God if you're theistically inclined, but also. Um, you know, you, you uh, want to be confident in your ability, and even if things don't work out the way you want them to, you know, know that you tried, that you truly can look in the mirror and say, hey, I tried my hardest. I wanted to be a championship wrestler in high school and get a scholarship. I was halfway decent. <laughs> I never, yeah, I was recruited by one school, and they weren't offering a full scholarship. So I didn't go that route, but my brother did. He became an all-American wrestler, which is pretty awesome. Khalil, you can Google him. Um, but this is, this is the stuff of life. And then, you know, you, you want to keep going and, and just, just keep trying. This is kind of a word of, of encouragement. You know, when I, when I got into PA school, I was so happy. Uh, but as I was going through it, I had this, um, there was a secretary in one of the buildings. Um, where I went to school and she was telling me, you know, when you finish you, you know, you'll have your PA degree, but they still won't respect you. I said, what are you talking about? And I was really like, what are you talking about? Said, they won't respect you. So who's they? Them. Them who? Because <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, I'm doing all this work and they won't respect me? I, I'm going to do one more lap. Talk to my wife. Oh. Um, you know, so, so that kind of shook my confidence. And at the time, I, I, I just turned 30. So and my, wife had been married, my wife and I had been married for a couple of years. We had our first home. And I was kind of like, I was kind of, I lost the job at, at a biotech firm. And um, so I, I didn't get to med school again. Didn't know about the PA program and, and got in and I was like, oh, wow, this PA thing is pretty cool. So now I applied and got in this. That's all right. Let's see what it's like. And it was very competitive. But when the secretary said to me, and keep in mind, she didn't have medical training. She hadn't been through the stuff I'd been through. But she said, they won't respect you. So I was trying to figure this adult thing out at 30. And I was like, oh, my God, maybe she's right. They won't respect me. I'm doing all this stuff and they still won't respect me. Again, who's they? But there's always going to be a they. And in that such ways, my, my, uh, my short talk about how to deal with haters, otherwise known as toxic people. You know, you've got people with fake bravery now, internet trolls, and their job is to plant seeds of dissension among groups and plant seeds of self-doubt within people to discredit people. So if you're overweight, you know, these are the guys that'll be like, oh, that guy's fat, ha, ha, ha. Then if you lose the weight and get some muscle, like, oh yeah, he probably uses steroids, ha, ha, ha. So there's no pleasing they. So you can't worry about they. So this year, God willing, I'll be 52. So my goal is not, is to spend the next few years of my life that I have left deleting the days from myself and, and from my life and I hope you guys do the same thing but uh check me out on Instagram and I wish you guys the best of success in your positive endeavors peace